Big people, listen up. Little Hedgehog Goes to School, the book, is available right now. It has over 50 five-star reviews on Amazon, and it is sure to delight the tiny people in your life and give you a chance to voice BB, Mr. Hedgehog, and of course, Little Hedgehog, too. You can get it by visiting littlestoriestinypeople.com forward slash books or by searching for Little Hedgehog Goes to School on Amazon. I hope you love it. Now, on to the show. This is Rhea. Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. I really hope I'll be able to see what I'm doing in here, because right now I cannot see very much. Let me explain, especially for those who are listening to the podcast for the very first time. Welcome, by the way. All right, so in a nutshell, I record stories for you in my little studio. My studio is wonderful. I've got my trusty microphone, which I am speaking into at this very moment. There's a fireplace, naturally. I also have an enormous tower of plates that occasionally gets knocked over by a guest. I have the remains of my antique teacup collection, of course. I also have the studio spiders and, more recently, the studio beetles, who reside in the uppermost corners of my studio, possess tiny laptops with tiny laptop chargers, I still don't know where they get those, and who periodically send me very rude emails. Well, today, I can barely see because the studio spiders and studio beetles have decorated my studio for Halloween. It is as ridiculous as you might imagine. First of all, there's the music they keep turning on. Oh yeah, there it is, right on cue. They must have a tiny radio or something, but I cannot find it due to all the cobwebs. There are cobwebs covering basically every inch of my studio. Because of them, I can't see any of my clocks all 23 of those, so I have no idea what time it is. It's very disorienting. Oh, and I can't forget to tell you about the fog machine, or the bats. Between you and me, I just don't want bats in my studio. Is that so wrong? Couldn't you have decorated outside my studio? This studio is for serious work. How am I supposed to tell a story with all of this nonsense going on? (sighs) Oh, looks like I have an email. Dear Rhea, we'll give you half an hour. Signed, the Studio Spiders and Studio Beetles. Half an hour is all I need. Perfect. This is so great. Now it's quiet and they've turned off the fog machine. I still can't see anything because of all those cobwebs, but the bats are waiting outside, and this is just fine. This is fine. Okay, let's get to our story. It's called Little Hedgehog's Halloween. Take it away, May. Remember, there are no pictures. You can imagine them in your mind. You can imagine them however you want. Okay, here we go. Where do you think they're going, BB? It looks like they are aiming for the tunnel located behind your bookcase. Ooh, maybe there is an event taking place at the underground lake. Maybe the Flying Squirrel Ballet Company is performing. Or maybe there is a wilderness first aid certification course. Little Hedgehog and BB watched as a long line of ants marched through Little Hedgehog's room. The ants began to sing. March, march, march past the prickly bears, march, march, march past the prickly bears, march, march, march past the prickly bears toward this 
Christmas serious time. BB? Yes, little hedgehog. Are they singing about us? Are we the prickly bears? I believe we are. And they are going into the tunnel. I am so excited for them. Even if the flying squirrels are not performing. I wish them the best. Although I do hope they learn how to create a tourniquet at some point, as it is a valuable life skill. The line of ants now stretched across Little Hedgehog's room, past her bed, around the back of the bookcase, and, presumably, into the mysterious tunnel that Little Hedgehog and BB had once ventured through to reach an underground lake filled with animals enjoying water activities. Farewell, farewell, farewell to the prickly bears, farewell, farewell, farewell to the prickly bears, farewell, farewell, farewell to the prickly bears as we enter this mysterious tunnel. One ant trailed behind the rest. He was singing a completely different song. La 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 I love how that last ant was just doing his own thing. Heartwarming. Hmm. What a sweet parade. A parade. Yes, a parade. Little hedgehog. Yes, BB? Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Little hedgehog's eyes gleamed. That those ants might encounter the same bug we encountered inside the tunnel. And maybe they will try to get his attention, but it will be hard to because he'll be listening to that new audio documentary, Pandemonium, the untold story of panda feuds. No. That those ants might get discouraged when they are halfway through or even two-thirds of the way through the tunnel because there is not any signage in there. And come to think of it, we should put up some signs, BB. Anyway, were you thinking that the ants might turn around and come back right before they reach the underground lake? No. Okay. Were you thinking that the song the ants were singing was quite good? And not just because it was about us. And they should really get a record deal. I agree, but that's not what I was thinking. Well, then what are you thinking, Phoebe? I must know immediately. Little hedgehog, when you uttered the word parade, it sparked something in my mind. I believe we have forgotten what day it is. <gasps> Phoebe. Today, Today is, Halloween. is Halloween. How could we forget? The ants were very distracting. Also, this week I was absorbed in developing the dance choreography for my neighbor's halftime performance at the Forest Kickball Association's Fall Tournament. She's going to burst through an enormous rice cake. That was my idea. And I was very focused on my ornithology diorama. It came out so good, BB. I liked the clash of bird species battle scene you made. BB grinned. But we'd better prepare for our own parade. The Halloween parade. Too true. They were without costumes, so they each got to work. Little Hedgehog went to her costume closet. Oops. Little Hedgehog, how did you acquire all of these costumes? Serendipity. My dad and I happened to be scampering by the Forest Theater when the members of the Actors Guild quit over a contract dispute. They tossed all their costumes in the dumpster. Fascinating. Bibi fashioned her costume out of found objects. Soon, they heard the unmistakable paw steps of Mr. Hedgehog padding down the burrow hall. He appeared in the doorway, yawning. <sighs> what are you two doing? It's so loud. It's Halloween, Dad! It is All Hallows' Eve, Mr. Hedgehog. Mr. Hedgehog yawned again and glanced upwards, thinking, 29, 30, oh yeah, it is. And we're making our costumes! We're preparing our costumes, Mr. Hedgehog. Mr. Hedgehog looked back and forth from his tiny daughter to her best friend. All right, just keep it down, okay? Okay, Dad. Indubitably, Mr. Hedgehog. Mr. Hedgehog ambled out. They heard him pad into the kitchen to make a cup of tea. 
Little hedgehog, I have completed my costume, Bibi announced a short while later. Please, behold and assess my handicraft. She was dressed in a ruffled shirt, a vest with shiny buttons, a bonnet, and shoes with curled toes. Bibi, you look fantastic. Thank you. Truly, you look so elegant. Thank you. I'm really impressed with the artistry of your costume. Thank you. Bibi. Yes? Who are you supposed to be? I am Madame Hedge de la Hague, born in 1736, artist known for her portraits of vacationing lizards. Oh, okay. I anticipate approximately 72% of creatures will recognize my costume. Madame Hedge de la Hague is quite well known. Little Hedgehog smiled and nodded, but said nothing. Little Hedgehog, have you decided on a costume? Not yet, BB. My prickles keep poking out of all these costumes. Perhaps you could select something that has prickles, and therefore integrate your own prickles into your costume, as I have done with Madame Hedge de la Hague. BB gave a small flourish of her paw to once again display her costume. That's a great idea, BB. Let's brainstorm things with prickles. So, standing in Little Hedgehog's room, in the depths of her burrow, Little Hedgehog and BB brainstormed prickled things found in nature. Cactus! Hmm, too obvious. Hat pin urchin. Too immobile. Prickly cucumber! Too green. Rambutan. Mmm, yummy, BB. But I don't think I can make my prickles wavy like that. Rosebush! Too difficult to convey. Short-beaked echidna. That might be too much like a hedgehog, BB. Too true. BB thought for a moment. Her eyes widened. I have it, little hedgehog. I have the perfect prickly creature costume concept for you. <gasps> you do? I do. Porcupine Tell me immediately. Puffer fish. Wait, BB. Did you just say what you were thinking? Yes, I, I think we inadvertently spoke at the same time. That's funny, because I was telling you to tell me immediately, and you did, but it was so quick that, never mind, tell me again. Little Hedgehog, you should be a porcupine puffer fish for Halloween. Little Hedgehog's eyes expanded and lit up with dancing porcupine puffer fish. She clapped her teensy paws together soon to be her teensy fins. It was decided Little Hedgehog would be a porcupine pufferfish for Halloween. A short while later, Little Hedgehog, Bibi, and Mr. Hedgehog set off for school a few minutes earlier than usual. They could not wait for the Halloween parade. Bibi scampered along, the toes on her tiny boots curling towards the moon. Little Hedgehog swam along the path, fluttering her little fins. Mr. Hedgehog was not in a costume, despite Little Hedgehog's and Bibi's repeated pleas. Please, will you wear a costume? Please, please, Dad, will you wear a costume? I have an extra frilly shirt if you would like to dress as Count Hedge von Hoggy, born in 1601 and well known for inventing what became the most requested dance number in the late 1630s in a small village in Switzerland. Thanks, Bibi, but I'll pass. When they arrived at school, the little animals all bustling around in their costumes. <gasps> Gerard, what is your costume? Oh, I'm dressed as a horse who is dressed as a zebra. Oh, okay. A voice came on over the intercom. It was the janitor, Mr. Pumice Stone. Yeah, okay, is this thing on? All right, all right, nice. Looks like that light is on. Hey, students, it's me, Mr. Pumice Stone. Little Hedgehog, Bibi, and their classmates peered upwards at the little speaker in the corner of the room. Mr. Pumice Stone had never made an announcement before. This was intriguing. Yeah, okay, so, uh, Ms. Granola. My name is Ms. Grant Nolan. 
Yeah, yeah, okay, so Ms. Granola has been hit with a case of laryngitis, so uh, she asked me if I could make an announcement. I said, yeah, sure, why not? I got a few minutes. Okay, yeah, so here's the deal, people. The Halloween parade. The intercom turned off. The Halloween parade what? Asked Lou, a badger dressed as a golf caddy. Maybe it's starting right now, said perchance McMillan, a raccoon dressed as a prairie dog. I bet he was going to say the parade is canceled, said Garth, a prairie dog dressed as a raccoon. All of the students glanced at Garth. Garth had a tendency to be negative about things. The intercom crackled to life. Yeah, so sorry about that, students. I'm still getting used to this thing. Yeah, okay. Uh, so where was I? The Halloween Halloween, Parade! The Halloween Parade. parade. Okay, yeah, so the uh, Halloween Parade is canceled. We're upgrading. There will be owls in the parking lot later to drop some treats. All right, so yeah, have a great day. And uh, happy Halloween. The intercom turned off. The students looked at one another and blinked. Garth smiled. It was the first time any of them had seen him smile. Mild chaos broke out in the classroom. No parade. No parade? No parade. This is moderately upsetting. After school, Little Hedgehog, BB, and their classmates filtered into the parking lot, where owls, the kinds that have sworn oaths not to eat animals, swooped down and dropped candied snails into their paws. The candied snails were tasty, but it was not a parade. Oh, BB, no parade, no problem. We still have trick-or-treating to look forward to. Too true. An hour later, Little Hedgehog and BB were at the doorstep of their neighbor, a hedgehog named Cecil. Trick-or-treat! Trick or treat. Cecil opened the door and peered at them. Cecil's pet cricket, Jermaine number nine, was perched on his shoulder prickles. Well, hello there. I was wondering if we'd have any visitors this evening. But why are you dressed in those ridiculous outfits? I'm a porcupine puffer fish. I am Madame Hedge de la Hogg, who rose to fame in the 18th century for her portraits of vacationing lizards. Cecil stared at them, uncomprehending. Cecil, Jemaine number nine said, hopping lightly as he spoke. Cecil, I think it is Halloween. They are dressed in imaginative costumes. Halloween. Imaginative costumes. Of course, of course. Little Hedgehog and BB smiled and held out the little gourds they had emptied in order to collect treats. Cecil? Yes, Jermaine? I think they want us to give them treats. Oh, yes, of course. I have the perfect thing to give away. Uh, I, I mean, to give them as treats. Cecil and Jermaine disappeared for a moment. Little Hedgehog and BB exchanged a look, but said nothing. They returned, and Cecil dropped a book into each of the tiny hedgehog's gourds. Little Hedgehog and BB peered at the titles. Discover the hedgehog you've always wanted to be? Find your inner prickly wisdom. Cecil, those are books from my collection. Don't excite yourself, Jermaine. We can, uh, replace them. At some point, potentially. Cecil smiled weakly. Jermaine number nine prefers self-help books, you see. Oh, okay. That is quite a departure from the other Jermaine's book interests. Cecil, what does that hedgehog dressed as famed lizard portrait artist, Madame Hedge de la Hog, mean by other Germains? Nothing, of course. Don't excite yourself. We must go. I have yet to complete my kettlebell exercises for the evening. Cecil shut the door. Little Hedgehog and BB shrugged and continued to the next abode. Mr. Hedgehog and BB's mom joined them on the path. At the next tree, the door was opened by a badger dressed as a ghost. Boo! He gave them delicious-looking celery lollipops. 
Then they scampered up the steps to a burrow where a mole was handing out caramelized worms. Yum! Yum. Next door to that burrow, they visited a tree where a crow was handing out woven bracelets she'd made. I make them in my spare time. As they traipsed through the forest, they saw a few goats pass by, yawning. <sighs> Little hedgehog. Yes, BB. It just occurred to me that we nocturnal creatures have an advantage on Halloween. These diurnal creatures are clearly struggling to make it through the night. So true, BB. Next, they arrived at Ms. Jams's burrow, not far from BB's home. Hmm, BB. Ms. Jams's lantern isn't on. No harm in trying. They scampered up to Ms. Jams's door and knocked lightly. They heard Ms. Jams's muffled voice behind her door. Oh, good. My crossword delivery is finally here. Ms. Jams opened the door, saw that it was the two short-beaked echidnas who, for some reason, kept accosting her at every opportunity. She closed the door. I guess she didn't recognize us. Perhaps she is not feeling the Halloween spirit. They scampered down Ms. Jams's path, just as a crossword delivery squirrel scampered up it. Crossword delivery? Oh, hey, nice Madam Hedge de la Hog costume. Thank you. Next, they approached an elaborately decorated tree. There was a skeleton dangling from a branch that rattled in the wind. A pumpkin spice scent wafted from a big three-wicked candle. Orange string lights were draped around the opening of the tree. There was spooky music drifting from a radio. And there was a sheep at the door. Bah. Bah. That is the strangest sheep I've ever heard. Mr. Hedgehog muttered, Please, tiny prickly treats. I mean, tiny prickly tasty creatures. Please, come have some treats. The sheep said as they scampered closer. Yay! Yay. Mr. Hedgehog and Bibi's mom shared a significant look. Uh, not yay. We're leaving. Mr. Hedgehog put a paw in front of Little Hedgehog. Bibi's mom put a paw in front of Bibi. The wiser, older hedgehogs turned their tiny hedgehogs around. What's wrong, Dad? Did something seem untoward to you? Yes, something seemed very untoward. Dad whispered as the four of them walked quickly down the path. That's not a sheep. It's a wolf. <gasps> a wolf in sheep's attire? A wolf in sheep's garments, Mr. Hedgehog. Yes. The four hedgehogs scampered as quickly as their little legs could carry them until they were out of sight of the wolf. At the end of the night, as the sun crept above the tree line, they headed home. Little Hedgehog seemed a little off. Hum de hum. La 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 la. Mr. Hedgehog, what is wrong with little Hedgehog? She is behaving more oddly than usual. <laughs> Don't worry, oh, BB. This is common on Halloween. Little Hedgehog is experiencing the combined effects of tiredness, <laughs> excitement, and eating too many candied snails. I think I'm turning into a candy. That makes sense, Mr. Hedgehog. My mom says I should only eat no more than the equivalent of one two hundredth of my body weight in candied snails in one sitting. Behind Bibi, her mom nodded sagely. Mr. Hedgehog raised his eyebrows, but said nothing. They all stopped off at Bibi's burrow. Little Hedgehog muttered a delirious goodbye to her best friend. Farewell, prickly bear. I shall never forget your portraits of vacationing salamanders. Lizards. Lizards. Bibi and her mom waved from their burrow step. Mr. Hedgehog lifted little Hedgehog onto his back and began the trip home. Dad, little Hedgehog murmured, her fins fluttering lightly in the breeze. Yes, little Hedgehog. <sighs> Do you know how I gave you all my super and abundant candies? Yeah, they were good. Did you like those when you were a small hedgehog like me? 
Now that you mention it, no, I always gave them to my dad. Hmm. Little Hedgehog began to snore. Dad, I thought you were asleep. Dad, do hedgehogs just reach a point in their lives when they suddenly like eating super and abundant candies? Dad laughed. I guess so. Dad? Yes? I have a new collection. Oh, yeah? Candied snails. I collected them in my tummy. <laughs> you might not want to add anything else to that collection anytime soon. Hmm. Little Hedgehog went back to snoring. Mr. Hedgehog ambled home, his tiny daughter on his back. He squinted as the sun lit up the forest and continued on towards the burrow. Oh my goodness, where did that skeleton come from? They were not kidding about giving me precisely half an hour. And they've added a dancing skeleton. I was not expecting a skeleton, and I was certainly not expecting it to be wearing skis, which really do not fit in this very small studio, people. Anyway, they always come up with something unpredictable, don't they? Thank you for giving me a half hour of quiet. <laughs> They look happy and devious. All is as it should be. Little Stories for Tiny People is written, performed, and produced by me, Rhea Pector. My in-house tech director, Peter Kay, runs my website and puts my stories on the internet for all of you to enjoy. Thank you to May for the super important reminder message at the beginning. And thank you to Reed, Colin, Ruby, LP, and Emily for the sound effects used in this story. And thank you, as always, for listening in.